Calling all detectives. A hit and run death. A group of numbers that cannot be decoded. And an ancient crime. Those are the exhibits on this page from my casebook. The casebook of Jerry Browning, private detective. A private detective like me, Jerry Browning, learns a lot as he goes along. One thing I've learned is that the face of truth can wear some strange disguises. I had just completed a job upstate and was driving back to town. I figured to be home and in bed by 11 when... There was a man on the highway. He was down on his hands and knees trying to drag himself off the road. I jumped out of the car. I picked him up, put him down carefully on the grassy shoulder alongside the road. Winston. Richard... Winston. Don't try to talk. Just lie quietly. Winston raised his head. Must tell you. Must get him. R572. O O one. I repeated the number carefully. R572. O O one. Winston nodded, lay back, and closed his eyes. I ran out into the road and waved my arms at the motorcycle patrolman. Officer, a man's been hit. He's lying on the grass over there. The cop took one swift look at Winston. This man is dead, mister. How'd you happen to hit him? Hey, wait a minute. I didn't hit him. Somebody else did. And I've got the license number. When I stopped on the highway to help a hit-and-run victim, he managed to gasp out some numbers before he died. Then I was arrested for the crime. It was almost morning before the highway patrol people finished testing my car and decided I'd been telling the truth, that I didn't hit Winston. I gave them the license number Winston gasped out before he died, and in return, they told me that papers in his wallet identified him as an employee of the Barnard Publishing Company. Winston's death was strictly a police matter, but just for my own satisfaction, I checked the numbers he'd given me at the city license bureau. This number, R57001, is issued to George Vernon, 485 Greenway Avenue. Late that afternoon, I dropped in at the Vernon home. The police have already been here. They're satisfied I had nothing to do with that poor man's death. Yeah? How did you satisfy him? Because my car is up on blocks. I haven't used it in three months. Now, uh, read this telegram back to you, Mr. Browning. Wire, collect, name and address of holder, auto license number R57201. And you want this telegram sent to every state license bureau, all 48 of them? No. Omit this state. Send the other 47. While I was waiting for the answers to my telegrams, I visited the offices of the Barnard Publishing Company where Winston had worked. The owner, Martin Barnard, was a gentle-looking, stoop-shouldered scholar. Mr. Winston's death has shocked us dreadfully. He was such a kindly person. I do hope you apprehend the person responsible. I looked around the office. Now, what sort of work did Winston do? A tall, younger edition of Barnard strode in and was introduced to me. This is Mr. Henry Mann, chief of our writing staff. Barnard turned to Mann. Mr. Browning is investigating Winston's shocking death. Mann nodded. We'll miss him. He was a fine researcher. Now, what kind of research did Winston do? Barnard explained. He was compiling data on a book of famous unsolved cases. Too bad he couldn't finish. Too bad for poor Winston. Barnard wasn't satisfied to let go of that. Too bad for all of us. Winston was on a most interesting case the time he died. Something about an unknown killer who murdered eight people. An arsonist. Fancy that. Man shrugged. Personally, I consider the case too shocking to print. However, I suppose we'd better include it, or some reviewer will think we've overlooked it. Oh, dear. Perhaps we had better omit it. When I left, the two men were arguing briskly over the merits of various remote murders and seemed to have completely forgotten about the one under their noses. I went on back to the telegraph office. Replies from most states were awaiting me. Thirty-two states issued no such license number. Ten others issued it in combination with more than one letter. 
By morning, I had all my reports and was making long-distance phone calls. In the end, all I discovered was that no hit-and-run accident was responsible for Winston's death. I went back at old Barnard at the publishing company. Uh, Mr. Barnard, I've got a hunch. Will you close and lock your safe? Barnard was startled, but game. I twirled the knob, then turned right to five, to seven, back to two, twice around to zero, then back the other way to one. I tried the handle. Nothing happened. R572001 was not the safe combination. Barnard smiled. I don't understand this, Mr. Browning, but if you want the combination to the safe, it's left to 46. Never mind, sir. It was a hunch that didn't work out. I tried the library next. I'd uh, like a good book on code, secret messages. The attendant handed me a slip. I filled in my name and address, handed it back. Uh, this isn't enough, sir. You'll have to find the title of the book and the reference files and its number. I blinked. Number? Wait a second. I took the pencil, carefully printed, R-572-001. The attendant looked puzzled. Well, this isn't for a book on ciphers. It's a volume on quite another subject. You mean these numbers stand for a particular book? The attendant smiled. Certainly. This library, like all libraries, catalogs books according to the Dewey Decimal System. There are ten main classes, each of which subdivides again and again. In that way, a certain number will represent the same volume in any library using the Dewey Decimal System. Okay, what book does R57201 stand for? It's a work by the noted scientist Alexis Carell. The title is Man, the Unknown. was easy after that. Henry Mann, the chief of staff writers, was the unknown killer in the unsolved crime that Winston had studied. Digging through old records, he'd come across evidence that pointed to his own chief, to Henry Mann. But he made the mistake of confronting Mann with the evidence. And for that, he died. But dying, he knew he had no time to tell his full story and gave the one clue he felt sure would be sufficient. Mann confessed after a police checkup of his car proved his guilt. Proved that he was the mass murderer responsible for eight deaths in a fire. Like I said, truth can be hidden for a long time. But for a murderer, there's never any safety. Not even in numbers. Listen next time to Calling All Detectives. Mystery drama, mystery quiz. And a chance for you to match wits with yours truly, Jerry Browning... Private Detective.